Hey guys, I'm finally doing the long-awaited video that a ton of people have requested, and that is how I am an online personal trainer. Sorry, that all came out kind of weird. How I am able to be an online personal trainer full-time and make full-time income with it, and there's probably so much that I could say in this video, but I will start with saying that um, if you don't know who I am, I am Lynette Hoyle. Um, I am go by Lynette Marie on a lot of my social media accounts, but I am uh, an online personal trainer. I am certified through NASM, which is National Association of Sports and Medicine. That's what I think it is, uh, which is one of the biggest certifications that, or the most popular, I guess I would say, certifications that you can get. I have been an online trainer for four months, and I was a trainer at a gym for over a year before that, so I've been doing that for a while. This is just how I run my business. This is how, well, what I'm gonna go into is how I run my business, how I was able to get as successful as I am right now. I have a big background in marketing and I know that that helps me. I don't wanna say marketing, sales. Um, I was a real estate agent. I've always done sales in my whole adult life. I've been managers at stores and things like that. Um, so I understand marketing and I understand how uh, sales work and that's something that I feel like I'm good at. So I feel like that's what's helped me and been on my side. You may not all agree with everything that I say in this video or you think that it's not right or whatever. If that's the case, that, that's fine. Move along, I guess. It's what's worked for me very, very well. Um, and the advice that I'm giving is literally, it, there's nothing that's been doctored up or changed. This is literally my exact advice and it's what I did um, to get my business going. I'm not trying to keep any secrets from anybody, um, but this is it. <sighs> One of the first things that's really important is for you to have the right credentials. I first, I've been in NASM and National Association of Sports and Medicine uh, certified personal trainer since May 2014. So a little over like a year and four months, I think that is, a year and a half, something like that. Um, I got certified May of 2014, but for probably two years prior to that, I was doing a ton of research on diet and exercise. Um, I'd worked with a personal trainer, um, for about six months where he was my trainer and he was teaching me a lot of stuff. I worked with a, an online coach when I was learning, when I was prepping for my first show, who taught me a lot about nutrition and stuff like that because you can get a, uh, your CPT, a certified personal trainer like certification, and still not know a lot. And I see a lot of times people are technically certified personal trainers, but they don't really know a lot. And if you're trying to sell yourself as a trainer and you've not kind of proven to people that you know a lot by either having the right physique, having helped a ton of people get a good physique and get healthy, um, you're not really anything. If you just started working out this year and you have never helped anybody lose weight except yourself and you're just like, you're two weeks away from getting your, um, your certification and you're like, I wanna coach online, good luck. Um, I feel like the reason why people wanted to work with me right away is because A, I trained in a gym for over a year before I even offered services online. So I, I knew I'd worked with over 100 people at that point, helping them lose weight. So I knew what I was doing. And given that I'd shown on the internet that I knew what I was talking about, I, I built my own credential by posting workouts, posting information about nutrition, stuff about workouts, exercises, and stuff. I built up I guess trust, people trusted me, they trusted my knowledge. If you're starting an Instagram account today, nobody knows who you are. No one's going to hire you no matter how low your prices are because they don't trust that you know what you're talking about, they don't know anything about you. Like People hired me because they knew I was certified. I'd gone through two different bikini preps, got success. Um, I'd spent the last two years building up my Instagram account talking about the things that I knew um, and how they worked and why they worked and proved that they worked. So. People trusted me. Okay, so say you got the credentials. You're a personal trainer, you've worked in a gym in real life, you've helped a bunch of people lose weight, awesome. The second thing you need to work from home as an online trainer is an audience. Is it gonna be the people at your church? Is it gonna be the people at your school? Is it is it gonna be people who watch you on YouTube? Is it gonna be people who watch you on Instagram? Um, when I started my online personal training business, I already had 5,000 followers on Instagram. Um, I knew that was going to be my main audience. Um, I have people all the time come to me and they have, you know, 200 followers on Instagram. They're like, I want to be an online trainer. And I'm like, okay, well, great. But you're going to have like one or two people interested just based on the numbers of followers that you have. It's just a numbers game. It's statistics. And so the easy answer might be then, oh, well, then I'll just buy Instagram followers. I can do that. That's a thing nowadays. If you guys didn't know, you could buy Instagram followers. Um, and I'll say that 
I was able to do like 5,000 followers on Instagram is like nothing. It's really nothing. It seems like a lot, but like it's nothing. The day that I opened up my personal training online, I literally got like 15 clients in one day from the 5,000, which seems like, well, darling it, of course, but I had grown that following completely organically. Um, and by that, I mean, I never did anything to bring in like a big whoosh of followers. Like I never paid anybody to shout me out. I never, um, or even did shout out for shout out. I never asked anybody to shout me out. Like big Instagram accounts, you know, like accounts with like a thousand, like a hundred thousand followers or anything. I never did any of that. So anybody who was following me was someone that followed me because they wanted to, not because there's some follow happy individual that follows, you know, the, I don't know, Instagram fitness account. And, you know, they shouted me out. And just by sheer fact of the fact that they have like a million followers, now I get like 5,000 of their followers. You know, you know what I mean? That's unorganic. People aren't following me because they found me and like me. They're following me because I was shouted out somewhere and they're like, oh, sure, I'll follow her. She's cute or she's whatever. Um, and I'm not saying you can't get business that way. And I don't have anything against people, you know, it's a form of marketing. I, I'm totally fine with it. I'm just saying that if you are marketing like that, like paying big Instagram accounts to shout you out or doing shout out for shout out with other people who have a lot of followers, um, it's less of an organic marketing group and you're going to have less people who are actually interested in your services because there's less quality of followers following you and that, and in turn, it's less people who actually care about you. You know what I mean? A lot of the people who signed up with me initially when I became an online personal trainer is people who cared about me, people who had been following me for a year or following my life, wanted to support me, um, trusted me because of the knowledge that I had put out there. But if I had just a bunch of followers who had just followed me for no reason because I was shouted out somewhere and they thought I was pretty, like they're not gonna hire a trainer just because she's pretty. They're not gonna hire a trainer just because she's a trainer and her prices are cheap enough. Like for the most part, I do have some people who know nothing about me and hire me and I'm like, hi, I'm Lynette. Like we should talk a little bit before this goes down. But um, yeah, so again, I don't have anything against non-organic methods of growing your followership, whether it's through shout outs or if you want to buy followers. I don't think that those are even real people. I think those are robots. But um, yeah, you got to have a following on Instagram or on YouTube or something in order to have good income. I'm not saying that you can't start your business and like eventually grow readers over time or followers, whatever. Um, go ahead, do it. Do your thing. Just don't expect that you're going to have full-time income or even legitimate income until you've got like a big group of people to like sell to, if that makes sense. It makes sense. It's like marketing 101. I didn't even finish college and I know that. The third thing I'm gonna say is just, it's gonna be kind of a broad topic, but or broad subject, but like be professional and deliver on what you say you're gonna deliver. Um, if you talk to any one of my clients, I'm like 98% sure that every single one of them would say, Lynette did exactly what she said she was going to do. She followed up with me every time she said she was going to follow up with me. She answered all my emails. She answered all my texts. She, um, the quality of her service was high. And I do that because I, again, I'm just one of a million online trainers. I'm one of the millions that are out there. And for me to be different, I have to first of all, be a person of my word. I have to keep my integrity as a business owner and deliver exactly what I say I'm going to deliver. And I also have to make sure that the quality of the service is there. For me, I offer uh, services such as I give my clients my phone number so that they can text me um, and have constant contact with me because I, I know that this is a, a mental battle um, being a personal trainer and I want them to have that kind of access to me that adds value to the package. And I respond to their texts. I don't just like wait and respond once a week or anything. Um, and, you know, I, I keep their workouts updated. If they say that one exercise hurts them, I change it. I take it out of their programming. Um, I pay attention to what kind of equipment that they have. You know, I stay on top of it. I make sure that the quality of what they're getting is there, that the value is there. Um, you know, you can't send, if you're saying that you're going to give custom plans to people, make sure they're actually custom. Uh, make sure the macronutrients that you're setting up for them is actually custom, that the workouts are actually custom. Like, if I, <laughs> I've worked with coaches before who've sent me like leg programs with a ton of quad stuff and I'm like, did you even see my photos? Like my quads are like 
They don't need any help. Please get all this quad stuff out of my programming. And that's the same with my girls. I'm not going to send a quad heavy girl a quad dominant workout. I'm, or I'm not going to send a girl whose upper body is, you know, larger than her lower body. I'm not going to send her three or four upper body workouts a week. Stuff like that. You know, people can pay attention and they realize when they're being kind of just shilled out. Like stuff that you're just sending out to everybody and I try really really hard not to do that. I don't write every single plan custom but I have probably 30 to 50 probably actually closer to like 50 workouts in my computer saved and when I'm sending one out to somebody I will open one up that I think is right for them and I'll just kind of read over it and see like oh well you know she has bad knees so I can't do that I'll switch out that workout with this or oh she doesn't have access to barbells so I'll switch out all the barbell stuff and put dumbbell stuff stuff like that um but yeah make sure the value is there Keep your word as a business owner. Don't do anything that if you're getting lots of complaints, don't be so prideful that you're like, oh, well, my clients are just needy. No, your clients are your bread and butter. They're paying you to do their job. Like, don't be like selfish. Don't be so haughty. Like, my clients are my boss. If they're telling me, uh, they're telling me I'm not doing a good job, I'm not doing a good job. And you have to have that right kind of mindset to where you're open to their criticism. And thankfully, I, you know, I stay on top of my stuff enough to where I really don't get criticism from any of my clients. And I've had like 150 online clients now, I think since June. Hey, and there's my cat button in always. Yeah, sorry, she's here to stay now. I can't make that leave. And one thing I'll say too, um, that kind of ties back into, you know, if you have like an Instagram account or however you're getting your followers, give people a reason to follow you. Have something special about you that makes people want to work with you, whatever your niche is. And I'm not saying you have to have some like loud, boisterous personality or like, you know, whatever. Um, but I know why people want to work with me. They want to work with me because I'm really into the like mental and emotional side of this. I, I tell people about my struggles. I put it out there that I go through struggles too. And people like that transparency because it makes them feel like they can trust me. Um, and I know that. And so that's what I offer to my clients is that transparency. And that's what just I feel like makes me different. I'm not just your average coach that just sits behind the desk and gets your name wrong and like sends out random whatever and just like, good job. See you next week. Like, I really do get involved with people and I think that that's my niche is that I'm really hands-on with my clients and um, my clients, you know, they like my personality, they like, you know, the kind of YouTube videos I put out. I keep everything consistent. You know, everything about my Instagram is consistent. Everything about my YouTube is consistent. I try not to be all over the place. I try to uh, give people what they ask for and give people what they're looking for um, while still doing what I want to do uh, with my social media accounts and stuff like that. But I've done what I can to kind of set myself apart, to give people a reason. You know, why you? Why would they hire you and not me? Why would they hire you and not some big name? You know, and and, and in saying that, be smart about your pricing. I mean, my pricing is extremely competitive. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do the custom macro plans and the custom workout plans where they allow check-ins every week, allow you to text your coach whenever you want, and... um you know, all the things that I offer. I don't think I've seen all of that kind of packaging with someone who has as much credentials as I do um, offer prices as low as mine. I mean, and you have to be smart about that. I've worked with some people trying to help them get started online and they want to charge crazy prices. Like people who have just been certified and have one-tenth the following of me want to charge double what I charge. I'm like, I'm not saying you're not worth it, but market value will tell you that you're not, like, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, just another little bit of advice. The last thing that I will say about it is um, to promote yourself. Promote yourself on social media, promote yourself in real life. Don't be afraid to talk about what you do. If you know that you're good at it, which I hope you do know that you're good at it, if you're deciding to try and do this full time, you have to be confident that you are the best trainer for somebody and that you can help anybody. And you have to market yourself in a way that's not annoying. Um, I try to talk about my training business. Um, I'll mention here and there just as reminders to people, like, yep, I'm an online trainer still. Um, but I only put like an actual like, ad on my Instagram maybe two or three times a month. I have it that I'm an online trainer in my bio. I what you know do all my YouTube videos and I constantly am talking about what I do. People know what I do. I don't have to necessarily be like, hey look, I'm an online trainer. Let's like annoy all my followers with all these ads. Like that's obnoxious. Don't do that. Don't be super salesy. Um some people like to be sold to. I hate being sold to. I hate feeling like you're just a running 
commercial constantly that like everything out of your mouth is just about selling yourself um, and so I don't do that. I um, probably maybe could even have more business if I would talk about my business more and like talk about my pricing and talk about my packages and stuff. But I like to keep it to just like once a week, once every other week, where I'll like post a client transformation or something like that um, because I don't want to be like like that. <laughs> that's it. That's it for real. That's all I'm going to say. This video is probably a million minutes long. I don't know what else I could possibly add in here to like make it better or like be more succinct but if you guys have any questions maybe I'll do like a Q&A video of this um, in the future so let me know if you have any questions if not I hope that this was super helpful and I hope that you guys like my cat being in the background <laughs>